My name is Rich Vanderwell. I've lived in Toronto for the last 11 years. I had a spinal cord injury in 1992. Uh, it was a result of a motorcycle accident. I was driving on the highway, not really paying attention. One of the few times I was actually going the speed limit in the right-hand lane. Figured nothing could happen, turned my head for a few seconds, and everything happened. My world changed. I smashed into the back of the stop truck and flew off the motorcycle. Broke one bone in my body, but it happened to be my spine. I had uh, 27 healthy, able-bodied years on this planet. I was fairly athletic. I ran a five-minute mile in high school. I was on seven different teams, played competitive soccer. And one summer day in 2005, my life took a turn for the worst in an instant. I was driving into Toronto at about 8 in the morning on a beautiful June morning. My sister-in-law was giving birth to her second child, which was going to be a boy. So I knew I had to be there. I wanted to be there. Nearly half my life now, for the last 19 and a half years, uh, I've required a wheelchair to get around. Do everything I used to do, figure out life again, move on. A deer got hit by an 18-wheeler on the opposite side of the highway. Two seconds later, the deer's carcass landed directly in front of my brand new Jeep Cherokee. And I instinctively swerved the wheel hard to the left, and the vehicle did the rest. Various people that witnessed the accident said I flipped the vehicle between eight to ten times. I can very vaguely recall uh, my time in the ICU. Um, I was kind of cloudy for the first few days. I was conscious. I was asking questions. So I wasn't sure if I was, I thought I was actually on a cruise because uh, I was on a striker bed. I had a collapsed lung. So they put me on a bed that was rotating just to help keep the fluids from pooling in my lungs. And I had a sensation that I was on a boat, and in my mind I thought I was going somewhere, they were going to fix me. The doctors were telling me I was paralyzed, I was never going to move. But to me, that, that didn't really register. Uh, I've been injured before, I've done a lot of crazy things. I've always got better. I was in intensive care for about a month until they finally stabilized me. After which I was airlifted to a rehab hospital in Toronto called Lindhurst. Thankfully my family gave me hope in those early stages to tell me to just win my daily battles and on a long enough timeline I would be vertical again. When I started my rehab experience, you know, my eyes were wide open seeing the guys coming in that were living in, in the chair for, for many years or even a couple months. It, it was shocking. Uh, I got there and it was all wheelchairs. It was, it was people in tears. It was family members with blank faces on their, or blank expressions on their, on their face. I had a great therapist. She really allowed me to do the things that I want to do which was, if I'm going to be spending my life in a wheelchair, I need to know how to use this thing. Right then and there, I decided to block out all the negativity in the Institute and to try and get myself up on my feet. I was 21 years old, you know, I wanted to party, I wanted to go with my buddies, I wanted to go to the bar, I wanted to meet girls, chicks, and, and have the conversations, and have girls flirt with me, and push my body against theirs, and, and be a young guy. Um, couldn't do that. Couldn't do it because I didn't have the confidence, couldn't do it because my body wouldn't allow me. And I couldn't do it because my, my friends were also very uncomfortable. My life now, I went back to school. Architecture was always an interest for me, but uh, getting back into sport, recreation, I realized the value. Um, the value I could, I could make in other people's lives, but selfishly, how important it was to me and why I need to keep that always a part of my life. Uh, sports was always a part of my identity. I was always that guy that could do, you know, cool things and great things. And, and I, I, got a, I got a little rush out of life doing those. So to me now, that's a bit of a balance that, that keeps me in check and keeps me just above the breaking point that life is still good. I do what life allows me to do. One day at four in the morning, sitting in my wheelchair in my parents' foyer, I glanced up to 13 steps leading to the second floor. 13 steps, so trivial to the healthy and free. But to me, 13 steps might as well be Mount Everest. Right then I vowed to make it to the second floor before my nephew Arden could remember me in a wheelchair. <laughs>